Welcome back to the fourth episode of SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Here we are breaking down the statistical analysis software known as SPSS. So, so far, we have learned how to create variables in SPSS and enter data, prepare Excel data and import it in SPSS, and create frequencies and frequency plots. Now we will look at descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics describe our data. For example, mean explains the average of the data set given and standard deviation tells us how the data is dispersed around the mean. This is what we are going to see in SPSS and also convert them to standardized Z scores. So let's begin the fourth episode of SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Hey guys, my name is Shardul, hailing from Shavash Tutorials and creator of shavash.co.in. I am also a junior research fellow at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Allahabad. Before we begin the masterclass, if you are interested in any tech product, software or language, be it for coding or research purposes, then be sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button on this channel and also the bell icon next to it so that you never miss an update. Also, there is a whole playlist of the masterclass in the description so that you can go to the other videos when you are done with this one. So let's begin. Now if you are here from the last video, this is the dataset we are working on. The dataset is called episode 3 data. It has 3 variable columns and 13 participant rows. You can download this from the links given below so that you can follow along with me. So there's basically three ways to find descriptive statistics in SPSS and they all do things slightly differently. Let's start with the most basic one which we use to start the descriptive statistics. We go to analyze, then descriptive statistics and then descriptives. We'll select height and then move it to the right window. Then we'll select options. A new window will pop up in which you will select whatever descriptive statistics you want. I am selecting mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum and range. When you're done, click continue and then OK. The output window will generate the outputs for you. The output is in a horizontal table telling us that the average height or the mean height of the participants is 168.1 centimeters and the standard deviation of the height is 12.059 centimeters. All in all, the data looks fairly normally distributed. Then there is an another way to do the descriptive statistics by going to analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. We are going to do the same thing as we are going to select height and move it to the right side. Then we will select the display frequency tables, disregard the message and then go to statistics. Interestingly, you have more options here for descriptives. We will select mean, median, mode, then select quartiles, meaning every quarter percentage of the data. If you want some other percentage of data, you can select percentiles and add percentiles by checking this box, typing in the percentage here and then clicking add. Let's also get standard deviation, range, minimum and maximum. Then we'll select continue and then we'll click OK. You can see that the output window is pretty similar to the previous one except the table is vertical and the output is a bit more comprehensive. The mean is the same 
the standard deviation is the same the range the minimum maximum is the same but we also have the median as 169.5 cm the mode as 152 cm which and it is also saying that multiple modes exist and the smallest value is shown which is the correct way of reporting the mode then we also have the 25 percentile the 50 percentile and 75 percentile of the data covering the inter quartile range a last way to find descriptive statistics is by going to analyze then descriptive statistics and then explore now this window looks a bit confusing but don't worry we'll delve in it slowly so the dependent list is where you add the data of which you want to find the descriptive statistics of the factor list is by which you can divide the data through the use of categorical variables in the label cases we differentiate the data by a specific nominal category like dates or locations etc so we'll put height in the dependent list and move gender into the factor list then we'll click statistics and you'll see that all the descriptives are clubbed together in the descriptives box we'll select that and let the confidence interval be 95% let also select percentiles and outliers then select continue under plots we'll deselect histogram because we have done this in the previous video you can go and check them out if you haven't and we'll also deselect stem and leaf as it's a pretty old method of displaying data in which data interpretation is not really easy but we leave box plots check then we'll click continue and okay the first table that all the descriptive statistics have been shown shows that the calculations of male and female has been done separately you should know that the splitting would work similarly if you had more than two categories of data like days of the week or month of the year we then get a very comprehensive descriptive table shown with alphabetically sorted categories of data this means comparing the factors from each other fairly easy we also have separate percentiles for each category then we have extreme values table that is the outliers table outliers mean the extreme values on both side of the normal curve then the interesting thing because of which i have run through the outputs of the above tables is the box plot of the data here we can get a lot of visual interpretation of our data the middle line of the box is the median the ends of the box are the 25th and 75th percentile collectively giving us the interquartile range then there are these fences that cover the rest of the data and usually listed beyond would be the cases of outliers so we can see with these three methods we can better describe our data depending upon the level of information you need you can choose one of the three methods if you need only the basics you will use the descriptives option if you need a bit more flexible data with some charts and frequency counts choose the frequencies option if you want to split your data for certain kind of analysis using categorical variables use the explore option there's one more thing to do before we get out of here that is converting the data into standardized z score or z score depending on where you are from the z scores property is that 
its mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. First, we'll go to the data window. Here, we will select Analyze, then Descriptive Statistics, and then Descriptives. We'll leave Height on the right side and we'll select this little button on the bottom that says Save Standardized Values as Variables. We're gonna go to OK then. In the output window, we see the same table as the last time we ran for the descriptive option. But in the data sheet, we see another column formed called Z height. This is the individual Z scores of all the cases of heights. Now you can run the descriptive statistics of this variable. We'll go to analyze descriptive statistics and then descriptives. In the bottom, we'll deselect the save standardized values as variable button and we will move Z height to the right also. Then we'll go to options and deselect all the options other than mean and standard deviation. Then we'll click continue and OK. The output shows us the exact same mean and standard deviation values of height. But the Z height's mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. Thus proving that Z heights are actually the Z scores of the height variable. We'll now save the data and output as episode 4 data and episode 4 output. We'll begin by saving this output. Clicking on save as. Selecting our desired location and saving it as episode 4 out put we'll save the type as .spv and click save we'll go to the data and we'll save as episode 4 data We'll leave the save as type as .sav. Select the folder of our preferred location and click save. So yeah, that's how it's done. So that right there is how you find the descriptive statistics and Z scores of the variables in SPSS. In the next video, we will explore how to do a Z test in SPSS as it is a bit tricky. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss the next video of SPSS Masterclass series. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of the Masterclass series.